Hello everyone and welcome to our Tech Tuesday Tutorials number 175. Today we explore a great alternative front end for ChatGPT called Forefront.ai. ChatGPT is the most popular large language model and chatbot, and it's understandable that people would want to use it. You can access ChatGPT from their website, just click on Try ChatGPT, or you can go directly there at chat.openai.com. Now, one of the problems here is that I've tried to get some people to sign up for it, and depending on the traffic that it's getting, it can get a little bit rough and glitches out or times out for them or gives them this mysterious white screen. The thing is, ChatGPT has been growing at a nearly exponential rate, and it's, it's just being bombarded with traffic. I'm able to get in because I have an existing account, I'm not trying to create a new one, and I'm on a paid account, which guarantees me access to this at, at all times. But if you're on the free plan, sometimes it can go down, it's not available, or it's hard to create accounts for. ChatGPT has already stated in previous interviews that they've that their main goal is to have ChatGPT licensed out to other companies, allowing their service to be integrated into other apps for a license fee. Forefront is one of those apps. It's a front-end chat experience that uses ChatGPT as the back-end and offers a different user experience than OpenAI's website, but it still uses the core ChatGPT back-end. Now, they say that you get access to GPT-4, as well as other things, for free. They're currently in a free alpha mode right now. They will eventually start charging money, but they do claim on their Discord that they will always have a free option. In my experience, though, I haven't seen that they have a lot of access to GPT-4. A lot of times when I've tried it, it's timed out. But GPT-3 seems to be working fine on here. Now, why would you want to use this? I'll explain. First, you need to log in or sign up. If you haven't get, created an account with them, you need to sign up. So we'll go in here and click sign up. Then we can put in our email address and other information or just continue with Google and let that single sign on handle everything. Now I've already created an account, so it just logs in for me. But when you first come in here, it does offer to give you an onboarding experience. And they basically say that the heart of it is these chats like this one and these personas. You can then choose certain chat folders that you would like to appear but you can always create more or rename them or delete them. So let's just pick a couple of them here. And then you can choose certain personas that you would like to use more regularly. Okay, so you'll have some of these already pre-selected um, from their giant list of personas, but you can make your own as well. So what are these personas? Well, they're presets basically for ChatGPT that kind of create a bot with these parameters that kind of help them focus on a perspective or a knowledge base and act in character. They make for a more user-friendly experience because they let you get past some of the prompt programming that's required to set up a chat with a plumber or behavioral specialist or a middle school science teacher. You can even create your own here by simply naming it and it's generally going to guess the purpose of the parameters like middle school science teacher. We can choose to have a chat GPT-4 conversation with this assistant or we can go in here and choose just click on our persona. Let's do that. So notice that it introduces itself and invites you to start chatting with it. Please design a lesson for on erosion. Now I'm using a very basic prompt here. I did not specify a lot of things. I didn't say how many periods. I didn't say uh, days. I didn't say what kind of instruction, whatever. If you've watched my previous video on ChatGPT, you'd know that that was kind of a no-no, that I should probably be specific. So you'll see that it doesn't have any times or anything else. So let's do a little bit more formal here. Revise, but make it for a 50 minute period and include and follow the 5e model. Let's see if it knows that. Okay, it does. So engage, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. Great. So we're going to watch a video about that. We're going to do an experiment. Okay. Um, I want more instructions and materials for that experiment.
and I can continue going down this path if I want to. Okay, let's try another persona. We can come back over here to new chat and create another persona or use one that's already taken up here. So we could do a famous person, maybe someone that's not listed like Edgar Allan Poe. Let's have a chat with Edgar Allan Poe. Okay, it's created him and you'll notice it even looks like him. That's pretty funny. So I can come in here and click on Edgar Allan Poe. It's on GPT 3.5 and I can say, uh, what is the symbolism of the raven in your poem, The Raven? Right, so we can keep on going. We can say, who is Lenore and things like that. So let's try another one, the last one. We may choose one of these pre-selected ones, like the Spanish translator. I'd like to have some Spanish translated, but here we run into a problem. If I need a Spanish translation bot, I, I probably don't speak Spanish. <laughs> so uh, again, with this conversational thing, I can come in here and say, um, can you use English for the, except for the translations maybe? Yeah, so now it can speak to me in English <laughs> and then uh, translate for me. So I might say, translate this into Spanish. All right, and this is from Sirius Black from Harry Potter, but let's just see what it says. Okay, and so let's say I want to go back, um, let's get something in Spanish and translate to English. And it'll do the same. Now, um, I can then have it explain that quote, and it'll do its best to do the same, staying in English. Now, every time I go into this chat, though, I'm going to have to kind of correct that guy and tell him that I need to use English, except for translation, because, again, every new chat is kind of a, a fresh new experience with that, with that bot. So if I start another one, it's going to do the same, right? Uh, so I, I may want to customize that. You can customize any that you have created. Uh, so on my other account here, I've set up one that I, I just called an English-speaking Spanish translator. And in addition to doing that, I also hit the pencil icon. And I told it to override its normal instructions, or at least add append them, and say only speak in English, except for the translated text. And that forces it to just use English only, because let's say I don't speak Spanish or something. And then I update that. So that whenever I start a conversation with this uh, bot now, it starts with como estas, just, just to say hello, but then it goes into English. And if I want to, then I can say, um, what does this mean? And then put in the quote. Notice that my question wasn't just translate this, but it's also what does it mean? Uh, so it gives me more context too. And it's staying in English at that this point. And so I could say, um, how do I say, have a great day? And let's just leave it like that. And it assumes that we're doing Spanish because this persona kicks in and it tells me there, but stays in English for all the rest of the interface. Again, that's to me more useful than the regular Spanish translator, which speaks in Spanish to begin with, which kind of defeats the purpose. So again, you create your own, you name it appropriately, and you then hit the pencil icon and override its instructions and giving it more. I should note that I've been using it with this other account to just do some chats and stuff like that, like how will ChatGPT help my students? And it's automatically putting them in, filing them into different areas here. So if I ask a question about travel, it should put it in there. Uh, let's start with a new chat. I'll just use the regular assistant. So I can just say, eh, how much would it cost me to travel from Savannah to Los Angeles? Assume 350 a gallon, 30 miles per gallon. So it's looking at roughly 2,400 miles and so on, does the math for me. If I look up here, I'll notice that it's already filed it as travel. And if I open that up, it's there. Uh, it's really smart as to where it puts it, but you can also move them to other areas here. Now these things are called folders and you can modify them. You can, first of all, you can expand them. You can move them and resort them in different order if you like, but you can also uh, modify them by clicking on three dots and choosing edit or delete them entirely if you don't want to have those sections anymore. And you can create more folders. You can move chats between folders and stuff like that just by dragging and dropping them. Chats also let you edit them or delete them. In addition to being able to manage your chats over here and organize them, which is really nice, it's something you cannot do with ChatGPT. You can 
also delete certain comments. So I could say, mm, this is all good, except I want to take this out. Let's delete that one and delete its response. So I've only got this. And that's nice because sometimes when you're looking at a long chat, you might have a lot of back and forth where you're trying to clarify some things or the bot gets it wrong and you don't need that anymore. You want to kind of call that and streamline a chat. Like we had one here for a portable summer fundraiser and there was just a lot going back and forth as we tried to narrow it down to how many it would serve and what it would cost and it got some stuff wrong so we had to correct it and things like that it'd be really nice if OpenAI's interface let me do that well forefront does so you can see i was able to delete that if i would like to share this with somebody that's also awesome i can come down here and hit share and it creates a shareable link so I could take that link and open it up with a different account, send it to someone else, and whether or not they had a Forefront account, they can go in there and see that chat. Now, right now it's only got three messages. So let's say I go back and I ask it something else. Sure, I'm just guessing at something here. Three Spanish idioms about hope. They tell you what it is, translates to, and explains it a little bit. If I go back to that shared one and I refresh, then that updates. Okay, that's crazy. I have a live link to chats, and as I modify those chats, then this updates. The last thing it does here is allow you to create images. It is nowhere, nowhere near as good as Midjourney, but it's built in, and it's done using the hashtag, hashtag image with lowercase i, it's important, and then whatever you'd like to have an image of. So a beach on a tropical coast. I don't know. So it says one moment while I'll generate your image, and there you go. So you can then download that image, use that image, copy that image, save that image, whatever. Remember these images are AI generated, so they're copyright friendly, copyright free, and well, also you cannot copyright them. US Copyright Office has currently come out with guidelines on that, but at least you can use it for free and without having to worry about anyone else having copyright on it. It wasn't human made. Okay, so in short, I would recommend Forefront for anyone who's currently using the free chat GPT tier. As if you're gonna be using GPT 3.5, yeah, you might as well have all of this other interface options. You might as well have all this ability to save and customize avatars or anything else. But if you're on the paid tier and you have access to GPT 4, it's just nowhere near as good as GPT-4. I mean, GPT-4 is just that smart. Now, occasionally you might get some um, GPT-4 support on Forefront, but I have not had much luck on that. And if you're a paid customer and you're getting GPT-4 you know, for your money, um, you might occasionally hop on the Forefront and uh, for the pre-saved uh, personas or the sharing option. But if you're trying to get friends started with ChatGPT, I would honestly have them take a look at Forefront, at least for now, and we'll see if their pricing scheme becomes unrealistic or if it stays you know, reasonable or not. Right now, it's just open and it's free for everybody in their alpha state. But I do think that whatever you're seeing now will probably stay free, and they're just going to add more options that, that are paid. That's my hunt. Okay, so I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. And if you did, go ahead and click that like button. Why not support us and click that subscribe button? Click the bell icon to receive email notifications. Leave a comment or an idea for a tech Tuesday video below. And share this video with your friends. We'll see you guys in the next video.